All right, I'm just hitting record. Um, welcome, this is not an in-class, we're having a discussion. Uh, before we, uh, before I hit record, we were like, yeah, I'm not crying, you're crying. Yeah, I'm not you, crying, you're crying. crying. I'm not crying, you're crying. Yes, Black Panther in honor of uh, the great Chadwick Boseman uh, who left mm -hmm. this earth at the age of 43. And it's, you know, um, I'm doing something a little different today because we, we had a class already. We did a, a discussion about God. And it was so powerful that I, I had to put it out early today because you went through the whole cycle of life. And I thought it was important for us to understand, you know, our purpose here and why we're on earth and, and that we're never really gone and that we carry our ancestors with us. And, and right. that discussion we had that we That's played right. this morning mm. uh, I think leads into what we're going to talk about now. But I wanted to share my screen and play a video of Chadwick Boseman and then I want us to just have a conversation about it. And guys, Feel free to join us in the conversation. Um, I don't know what it would feel like to carry that burden of knowing that you have this cancer. No. And the world is looking at you and he walked through with such dignity in these last days, you know, and showed up, showed up. He did. This is two, 2016. He was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer that advanced. And he did Black Panther, Black Panther 2, the Avengers. He did the Five Bloods. He did Marshall. He showed up for events. He showed up in so many ways. He did Howard's commencement speech in 2018 with cancer. Yeah. He so did. And you know, it's, it's funny what, what you're about to show us. You know, we had the best seat in the house. The faculty like to joke. Uh, we're often forgotten, but we always had the best seat in the house at commencement because we sit right in front of the stage. And, um, of course, you know, it was the biggest thing. I mean, Obama has spoken, Oprah has spoken, but Chad Bozeman, right when Black Panther was hot, uh, it took the brother a little extra time to get from, because he usually come out of fine arts. We line up and then they come out, they come out last. It took him forever because everybody kept wanting him to do the Wakanda symbol, right? And then just as they hit the red carpet to come on down front, somebody yelled, hey, Black Panther. And this brother, with your president, you know, guiding him, come on, we gotta go. He stopped in his tracks, turned around, and walked to the rail and shook hands with not only that person, but all these other people. He said, Look, I understand protocol. And we'll talk about this after we see the video. I'm just setting it up for what we're about to see. It took a little while for him to get up there. So then he passed right by us. We all there, you know, everybody, especially them younger. I'm it's incredible when you see a whole bunch of sisters, I don't care how old they are or how young they are, on a faculty turn into fangirls at the same time, but they all crush each other. I'm like, everybody just stand still. And the brother walked past you, I took a picture and kept going. But um, what you're seeing now, that official video you about to share with us that, that the world saw, it took him a while to get to the stage because you talk about a humble man and a brother who, when he was a student, was part of student movement. He wouldn't, he could, he could not come off that carpet and talk to those folks, because that's why he did the work that he did. But anyway, let me not, please, right. show, okay. please show us. We're gonna us. talk more about this. Uh, and I'm yeah. just showing a little piece, because I think it also ties into our conversation from earlier about God and, and he quotes scripture. So I'm gonna figure out how to share my screen, and we're gonna play this video. Uh, right. Share screen, all right, let me remove this, and let me hit play on this. How do I do this? Lord Jesus, come on, Karen. Get your skills together. All right. Hit play. There it is. There it is. Expand it. Ali. Expand it. In the middle of the yard. All right. Let's do it again. Go ahead. Drawing from his victories and his losses. At that moment, I realized something new about this, the greatness of Ali and how he carried his crown. I realized that he was transferring something to me on that day. He was transferring the spirit of the fighter in me. He was, he was transferring the spirit of the fighter to me. He was transferring the spirit of the fighter to me. Sometimes you need to feel the pain and sting of defeat to activate the real passion and purpose that God predestined inside of you. God says in Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Graduating class, hear me well on this day. When you at this day, when you have reached the hilltop, 
and you are deciding on, on next jobs, next steps, careers, further education, you would rather find purpose than a job or a career. Purpose crosses disciplines. Purpose is an essential element of you. It is the reason you are on the planet at this particular time in history. Your very existence is wrapped up in the things you are here to fulfill. Whatever you choose for a career path, remember the struggles along the way are only meant to shape you for your purpose. When I dare to challenge the system that would relegate us to victims and stereotypes with no clear historical backgrounds, no hopes or talents, when I questioned that method of portrayal, a different path opened up for me. The path to my destiny. When God has something for you, it doesn't matter who stands against it. God will move someone that's holding you back away from a door and put someone there who will open it for you. If it's meant for you, I don't know what your future is, but if you're willing to take the harder way, the more complicated one, the one with more failures at first than successes, the one that has ultimately proven to have more meaning, more victory, more glory, then you will not regret it. Now, this is your time. <laughs> The light of new realization shines on you today. Howard's legacy is not wrapped up in the money that you will make, but the challenges that you choose to confront. As you commence to your past, press on with pride and press on with purpose. God bless you. I love you, Howard. Howard forever. Finally, I thought of Ali All right, in the middle of the yard. Figure out how to turn this off. It is elder uh, years. All right. Draw all right. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> you know, he's talking about purpose. He's standing there knowing that cancer is racking his body. And he, he does a couple of things which you talk about quite often, Dr. Carr. Mm. He, he starts off talking about, it was a 30 plus minute long speech, you were there for it. Yeah. But in this clip, the reason why I pulled this one, Ali is transferring, he said, the spirit to fight. Ali in his days racked with his Parkinson's and not being able to be fully himself, transferred a spirit to Chad, Chad sharing this story. That's right. And he says it three times because there's something about the codification of saying something three times. He transferred mm. that spirit. He transferred that spirit. He transferred that spirit. He said it, right? And as he's saying it now, it's so much more poignant to watch it back because he's talking to himself to keep fighting, right? The man had colon cancer, which is horrific. And he's standing up there talking to these young people about what their future might be. And he's talking to them about their purpose. And it's something you and I have talked about both on mic and off mic about kids today see seeking the fame and the money, chasing after these things, right? These, these carnal things and not really understanding why are you even here? That's the first question I asked my students. And many of them couldn't answer. Why are you here? Why are you even here? Why are you in this? Why are you taking this class? You know, mm. what is your purpose? Mm. And, and none of them could answer. I started class. <laughs> At the resistance, you know, I'll be writing, I'll be writing down notes. Y'all can't even see me. Can't start. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, Please. no. But I just, I mean, I, I, I dropped that out there because I think, you know, if, if we learn anything and the, and the impact of somebody that we didn't know, you might have known him personally because he's a Howard alum. No, 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 no. Met him once, you know, at Sirius XM um, during the Black Panther uh, junket. They were on a press junket. Sway Calloway was one, he was one of, one of the most gracious people I know, by the way. Um, you know, he's Oakland. So he brought in Ryan Coogler and he had the whole cast in the bubble that we had there at Sirius XM. So it was 
Ryan Coogler, Chadwick Boseman, you know, um, Lapita Don Denai, of course, um, my man, Eric, uh, uh, Michael B. Jordan from Jersey. Wow. They were all there. They were all there, right? And Sway, this was his interview, but he invited every Black host to come and sit in that bubble and ask a question. He gave us the, the uh, he allowed us to intrude on something, which I, you know, I was so great, grateful and gracious. So we all sat in the front. It was me, Bevy Smith, uh, Mark Tom. I mean, we all got to, to ask a question in an interview that was Sways, right? And so afterwards, you know, we all got to talk with different people. And, and so I got to meet him, um, humble, gracious, wonderful. And he broke down during that interview talking about two boys with cancer that he met on the, on the trail. And now I'm like, man had cancer. And that's why he was crying. And I was like, what humanity, you know, I'm sitting there and it's still, yes, you have humanity. But I was wondering if those tears were also like, I'm doing, I'm going through the same thing and no one knows it. Sure. Damn. So anyway. No, no, sure. No, 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 not, not any way at all. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I never got the chance to, uh, spend any time with, with, with Chad Bozeman. Uh, he actually is interesting. Uh, he was graduated, he had a Bachelor's of Fine Arts from Howard, of course. He came out of uh, Fine Arts the semester before I came to Howard. It was in the spring of 2000, I came in the fall. So I know a lot of his uh, younger classmates by year, semester, his professors, my good friend, Sybil Roberts, was a playwright. Because, you know, Brother Bozeman came to Howard to be a playwright and a director. He was going to New York. And then he went to L.A. And it's like, it's a whole different scene. And so people see the movie star and all that's there. And we'll get into this because it's very important. In fact, it's really, you know, there'll be a lot of obituaries. There'll be a lot of tributes. There'll be a lot of conversation. Most of it's going to center around his film career and Black Panther in particular. And as well, we can understand that. But to, I think to understand... Chadwick Boseman, not just as an individual, but as part of a tradition, a genealogy, a representative figure, we have to almost always, as we have to do with you or me or any of the rest of us, place us, place him in community. And Sybil, brilliant playwright, uh, politically conscious, did a lot of work, uh, did a play on Mumia Abu Jamal. I mean, just the most, most beautiful spirit you ever want to to know, a little slip of a thing, a little small lady, you know, girl, we were around the same age. In fact, Sybil came to Howard maybe a year or two before I did. And she kind of was a big sister to me when I came in. And, um, but, you know, she was partnered with him when uh, he went to the University of Pittsburgh to produce one of his plays. He's a playwright. In fact, the first play he wrote was in high school because he wanted to be a basketball player. And, you know, his, his brother right uh, before him uh, Kevin is a dancer. He danced in Lion King, all Broadway, kind of thing. But the oldest brother is a minister. You saw he quotes scripture seamlessly there. His oldest brother, Derek, is a minister. But but I, I bring all that up to say that he was going to be a basketball player. He wanted to play basketball. And then one of his teammates got killed. He's from South Carolina. And Chadwick Bozeman wrote a play. He said, I would never have been in the arts, a playwright, if, not, if I hadn't been going with my mom to pick up my, my, my brother, uh, my brother and seeing the, the, the lights and I got caught up with wow the stage and all oh, this is what I want to do when his When his friend got killed he wrote a play called Crossroads And he said all of a sudden basketball wasn't important to me when I'm thinking about our conversations We've been having these last few weeks about the nature of that crossroad where as shoe sits We talked about bugs money we talked, But as she was at the crossroad and every day we we wake up at a crossroad and we get to make a choice that that event pushed him in the direction that defined not only the rest of his physical life, but allowed him to contribute to the rest of our lives in ways that we'll never be able to tell. Uh, but we'll get into the plays he wrote and things like that. But when we see that clip, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we always talk about spirit guiding all these conversations. And we talk about how the people think, oh, wow, y'all script this, y'all rehearse all week. No, no, we get together, we get a time. You, you send me the link, we press record, and we talk. People say, oh, yeah, because, in fact, this reminds me of something. I won't go too far. This fans will come right to this Ali moment that you raised, because that, that, that moment really sent chills through a lot of us. Um, but 
people will say, you know, there's this, there's this, there's a joke I once heard, you know, right there at Times Square where the artist will draw your picture and then, so the guys walk in with his girl, they walking down the street and the artist is like, yo, hey man, let me do your picture. Let me do, let me draw her picture. Let me draw her picture. And she was like, okay. So he does the picture, takes him 10 minutes. And then he says, that'll be $50. And the brother is like, now he, you know, he done already, he, he got a, man, $50, it took you 10 minutes. He said, 20 years and 10 minutes, brother. 20 years and 10 minutes. <laughs> so people think we rehearsed it. No, you press play. And what we talking about now, this is what we do. <laughs> so I mean, the, and, and just like we do what we do on earth, the ancestors and the creator, it's like, if you ever doubt they're here, all you have to do is look and be able to see the convergences. So when Chad Bozeman is telling that story about Ali, it's very interesting. He says, I'm walking across campus. And if you've ever been on Howard's campus or any college campus, certainly HBCUs, they, we call it the yard, right? That's why BET had a, the yard, right? It's, it's that little square, <laughs> wherever it is. I don't care how, Oakwood don't matter. I mean, you know, and there's some beautiful squares. So, so right there, as you're walking the, the yard, like a rectangle, it intersects and there's a sundial that sits right here by right near as you're walking toward the circle the middle of the, the square the crossroad if you will bozeman says i'm walking across away from fine arts and who's walking toward me and meets me there but muhammad ali he says i have my head down I'm struggling, you know, because actually 2018, this was right after the uh, students had taken over the administration building. I mean, they had a list of demands that we got to do because James Comey had been hired to be on Howard's faculty. They did not like that. I mean, it's all kinds of stuff. The place was in an uproar. It still reverberates from that because, you know, everybody's at a crossroad. Howard administration, at students, faculty, everybody. It's a, it's a roar. Chadwick Bozeman accepts being the speaker because, of course, Black Panther comes out and kind of, that, that kind of draws everybody into that. And he went to Howard, so everybody's fired up. So, but he's standing there and he says, you know, first of all, I support the students. Because when I was a student, we did take over. And he did because they closed the, uh, the, the school of fine, fine arts used to be a college at Howard. And they reduced it to a division of the College of Arts and Sciences. There's a famous photograph of Chadwick Bozeman storming the stage at, during, during opening convocation with the president of Howard University and they take over the convocation. And there's a picture of Bozeman doing like this. And my friend, Pat Swigert, who's the 16th president, 15th president of Howard, is standing there looking like, what the hell? And, and I laugh about it, because I never talked to Chad Bozeman about it, but I talked to his friend, Brad Young. Brad Brad Young, who was also involved in that movement, and we know Brad Young, the cinematographer, the, one, of the, one of the the next great, one of the, the latest students of Haile Garima, who trained um, Ernest Dickerson, who did all Spike Lee's movies. I mean, Haile is the main. Uh, but, Brad Young, one of his uh, students. So I'm listening to Brad tell me this story. He said, yeah, man, I mean, we was in there. We said, what are we gonna do? We gonna take over? No, we're we gonna stand in the back, we gonna protest. And the next thing you know, we in the back of the auditorium. I look at Chad, Chad look at me, and Chad is walking down the aisle. I said, where's he going? So I had to go with him. He walked down the aisle, went up on stage and confronted the president. You're not gonna close the division of fine arts, the college of fine arts. You're not gonna reduce it to a division. So in 2018, he's given this commencement speech. He's back. The Conquering Son, the Hero, the Black Panther, Jackie Robinson, the James Brown, right? Thurgood Marshall. I'm standing here and he says, we need to have fine arts back as a college. He had never forgotten <laughs> what he had done when, when they were all young and undergrad. And he said, and I support these students. He said, although I hear y'all got this thing where you can leave the building and take a shower and go to class and then come back. He said, when I was here, we had, I was lucky we had a piece of pizza. We went in the building, the building had to be locked down. There's a whole story behind that. Um, one of my former students who's now on faculty at Howard has written a brilliant book on it uh, called um, What We Are Fighting, uh, we, we Are Worth Fighting For. His name is Josh Myers, Dr. Joshua Myers. It's the history of the 1989 uh, Howard student takeover that preceded that one. And so you get a lot of the stories of, in fact, in 1989, that takeover was led by, it's a decade before, that was led by April Silver, great April Silver, still in Brooklyn. But, and of course, their comrade, Ras Baraka, of course, the son of Mary Baraka, Black Neo Force. All, so there's the tradition, not just at Howard, but at HBC was generally of taking over. You know, we're not, no, we're not going to put up with this. So anyway, to make a long story short, this is a setup to the Ali piece. Chad Bozeman is like, yeah, I ain't have all that. You know, I ain't have, we didn't have all them luxuries when I was here. We lucky we got a piece of pizza. In fact, 
you know, I was struggling. I'm a struggling student trying to finish with it. He said, and one day I was just walking with my head down. I'm walking across the, the yard, campus of it. And I looked up and here come Muhammad Ali coming my way. And like you said, this isn't Ali of the 1960s and 70s. This isn't Ali who reclaimed his crown. This isn't Ali who knocked out Foreman in 1974 in Zaire. This is Ali with the disease that will ultimately diminish his capacity to engage in this kind of playful nature. But what Chad Bozeman says is, as he got closer, he said, I saw Ali do like this. <laughs> so I pulled my hands up and we started shadow boxing. He said, Ali in that moment, he locked eyes with me. He started doing this, I started doing this. And in that moment, that fight, it transferred to me. In other words, I, I forgot about the struggle I was thinking about up until that moment I saw him. And so when you encounter him, and you know, Sway, Sway has a niece that's a junior at Howard now, real low key. It's very interesting because he said, uh, she told me, she said well, she was a freshman. In fact, the first class she took it out was the summer of her freshman year. And I, we taught that class, it was an African American Studies class. She's a STEM major, scientist by training. She said, yeah, my uncle sends people down here to check on me, and he don't tell me he sends them. And then he asked me, they, they might be in here now. I said, well, good. Tell you. <laughs> 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 so anyway, I mean, it's all community. So, so, so um, what I was about to say is he talks, when, when Chad Bozeman is talking about that fight being transferred, and then for you to catch that notice in him in that moment when he's really, you know, getting emotional talking about these cancer survivors. When you tell that story, I'm listening and I'm thinking, I even wrote it down. This is a brother who in those children is seeing himself. He's seeing his brother who's a minister. He's, he's, he's facing his fear, but he's also facing the fight. And we'll talk more about this in a second, I'm sure. But you know, the guy who cast him for a Black Panther, no, actually no, the guy that cast him for 42. Can you imagine he made 42 in, in 2013? This is all, we talking about seven years, not even seven years, <laughs> you understand? And a theater career before that, we're talking about his theater career too, but, but he says the guy that cast him was like, the reason that I thought he would be good for Jackie Robinson is that this man has a stillness. He has a kind of calm. And I remember sitting there in the yard and now I'm wondering like you, if this was a factor in it. You never saw Chad Bozeman these last few, he didn't smile a whole lot. I mean, he smiled, he was played around, but there was this kind of stillness. And I don't think that was the, the disease necessarily. I think that's who he was. The Yoruba have a word, itutu. Itutu means coolness. That's why when you see like African statues and art, you don't see a lot of smiling. I kid with my students all the time. I say, I'm a guy who laughs all the time, smiles all the time. I said, I couldn't have sat, they wouldn't have made no statue with me on it because you don't see African statues with teeth. <laughs> they be like, and even when we want to take a picture, we be like, are y'all ready? All right, one, two, three. <laughs> Africans, and then we will make the joke picture, out, but the picture for the book got to be cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bozeman embodied it too, too. And I think that would have been the case whether he had uh, had colon cancer or not. I think about him uh, from this standpoint too. You know, when we think of Hollywood actors, you know, there there's a, a look. There's a, there's a level of narcissism. There's a, you know, that he could play. And I just had this conversation a couple of weeks ago. I said, when they cast Chadwick Boseman to play Thurgood Marshall, I had the screw face and the side eye. I'm like, he don't look nothing like Thurgood Marshall. That makes two of us. I watched the movie, <laughs> Dr. Carr, and he transformed that role. I saw Thurgood Marshall. I said, that man is brilliant. That he could play Jackie Robinson. I get that. James Brown. Okay, all right, but did that? He did that when they got the third good Marshall. I was like, knock it off. But I he know. did that, and I watched that movie. I was on an airplane, and I said, I'll be damned. This is good. This is a good ass movie. Um, Chadwick Boseman did his thing. I see third good Marshall. I see him, and it just talks about like true actors, true thespians, th true students of this craft which he came, as you just educated us, through the writing experience, because in the beginning it was the oh, work. No they are able to, which is why you know, you don't have to put on prosthetics, darken your skin, you don't have to do those things, you just act, and we believe you, because you are. And I think that that was the power of him, because he wasn't the quintessential Hollywood look looker, you no, know? He no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. You're right. I felt the same way. That's why I put my, 
I look, I said, I ain't watching this because I'm a Charles Hammond Houston fan who was, of course, the Jegna, the man who really trained Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall, and there's a whole body of literature on this. Will Haygood's book. I mean, you go back to Carl Rowan who wrote about him, or Juan Williams, all the biographies of Thurgood Marshall. Colorism played a major role in how Thurgood Marshall was able to move through the world and even how he was received in black communities. And so for Chad Bozeman, I'm the same. I did not go see the movie in the theater because, you know, I'm one of them people that's like, no, I'm not going to give Hollywood no money for this because I love Chad Bozeman work, but I'm like, no, I'm not going to, I'll wait. So, of course, I got the DVD. And when I put it in, I was like, it's a bad MF. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you right now, cause let's see, cause I'm a, I'm a skeptic, you know. And those guys, I mean, I, at one time I, I was gonna be a lawyer. So Oliver Hill, Spotswood Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, Constance Baker Motley, Holly Murray, he's my heroes. Charles Hammond Houston. You know, I said, so you don't mess this up. And I looked at him, and you are exactly right. It wasn't the phenotype; it was the spirit. He inhabited the spirit of Thurgood Marshall. That confidence, that kind of cockiness, that ability, which lets you know that's a that's a stage actor. Chadwick Boseman was a stage actor, and stage acting came really second to writing and directing. He went to Howard to be a writer and director. Oh, I can't, Karen. Karen, when I tell you, like I said, that first play he wrote, Crossroads, was high school, he got to Howard. The first thing he wrote there, well, no, actually it wasn't the first thing he wrote there, but he was near the end of his career. And then he, and then he started writing plays and producing plays, his own plays, Rhyme Deferred was the first one he did. It's like a hip hop play with music theme and this kind of thing. And I guess that would have been, I don't know, he graduated in 2000. So like between like 99, 2000, 2001, and then they, they produced that. The second, oh, by the way, he's reading, studying all this time too. One of his very good uh, brothers, uh, he calls himself Jolly D. He's a musician, he's a, he's a storyteller, uh, brilliant brother, intellectual. Um, he actually, uh, Bozeman called him and he worked on Black Panther, helping train us. So you see the dancing and the kind of move. These guys worked together at Pyramid Bookstore on Georgia Avenue. Chad Bozeman worked in one of the African centered bookstores in the United States of America. And, and uh, Baba Tahuti, and uh, the, they, you know, I talked to Baba Tahuti, he said, Yeah, man, Chad Bozeman, where are you? Yeah, man, them cats just be here, man, read my books. Yeah, man, I ain't paying for nothing. Like, it's so funny because. But, but he was studying the whole time that he was at Howard and he was working. And so the second play, he did kind of like a, 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 a trio of plays, which is why I think as we know, and now that we know that he was very ill, those last projects that he worked on to completion, The Five Bloods, mm -hmm. apparently Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, these were deliberate choices. So the last thing we see from him, maybe not the Barry Jenkins thing he's doing, Expatriate, which is about a brother who actually did hijack a plane in the 1970s, all this stuff. But why Ma Rainey's Black Bottom? Because at heart, he was a playwright. You know what I'm saying? August Wilson did this thing. And so the, the second of the three, he did a play called Hieroglyphic Graffiti, a retelling of the Isis Osiris story, the Osiris says story, the same story that you and I were talking about in terms of the Egyptian. He, Chadwick Boseman wrote and produced a play called Hieroglyphic Graffiti. And the whole play was a retelling with hip hop and all kinds. Of, I'm like, this guy, what, what was he doing? And it was produced by the Negro Playwright Theater and Kuntu Theater. Kuntu is a very famous theater, in fact. Kuntu Theater, um, I think this was the one that they did in Pittsburgh. Sybil went out there with him. I'm saying, He's retelling stories, but he's doing it as a, as a student of African history and culture, as a, someone who's living through the hip hop era, and he wants to build this bridge. This is long before Black Panther. It's like he's born to play back Black Panther. And he was working at Pyramid Bookstore with Baba, uh, Baba Tahuti and Baba, Baba Rafu. Did you see that movie that he did in 2015? And this was one I went, I didn't see it. I saw it on the plane, uh, Gods of Egypt. I did see that. What did you think of that? Well, so um, I hated Gods of Egypt. Uh, that was a R Rupert Murdoch. I think was, I think it was a Rupert Murdoch production, and it I might think, have been. And 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 he had the audacity because there was a lot of conversation about these Egyptians all being European-looking people. Um, That's right. And actually, the cast was, except for um, Chadwick, 
at Sirius XM and I went past the bubble and, and gave them the gas face. Cause I'm like, how y'all playing Egyptians, right? I mean, I'm just, it just didn't make any sense to me, but I did see, on, I saw the movie mad. So no, see, see me too. That's another one. I'm not paying money to see it. And, and, and we study Egypt and, and Dr. Mario Beatty, myself, Dr. Levi, we take students to Egypt every year. I've been going to Egypt since 1996. I was there when Asa Hilliard made transition. He was with us. I, I'm not watching this BS. Chad Bozeman, I like Chad. Chad, why did you do it? In interviews, Chadwick Bozeman said, the reason I took that job was because you're not going to make a movie about ancient Egypt and have no black people in it. <laughs> and at that moment, I said, because we were, we, we were flying to Cairo on Egypt Air, and Egypt Air had guys in Egypt. I said, well, I'm going to be on this damn plane for a dozen now in hell. Let me go and watch this. He played Tahuti. Now, of course, he worked for Tahuti at Pyramid Bookstore. But Tahuti, and I would pull it. In fact, I got a, about a two-foot Tahuti that I got from Baba Tahuti, in fact, at that same bookstore. When I was just, because we used to ride down from Philly and get books from Pyramid, because of Pyramid, everyone's place in Baltimore. These are the greatest black bookstores. Uh, Sankofa now is, of course, Holly Greenman's bookstore. In fact, that's what Sankofa is where Brad Young and I had the conversation about Chad. But at any rate, when um, he says, when I saw he's playing Tahuti, I'm like, I didn't know what to think. Then I read the interview later and I said, okay, the one black, if it's going to be one black person in this, he played Tahuti. Tahuti is the symbol of intelligence. Jehudi is the one who they say was present at the creation of everything, who writes everything down. The figure of Jehudi is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a picture of an ibis, like a stork in the stork family. And this bird has a head of the bird, a body of a human being, and he always got a book in his hand. He said, when you die, Jehudi is standing there with the book of everything you've done in your life. And then you have to speak what you've done. And if it don't match the book, they send you back. Or they send you to oblivion. But if it matches the book, that means the feather of my eye. You, they, put, they put that on the scale. Jehudi is right next to the scale. Your heart is on the other side. Jehudi got the book. You speak and you're like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the scale weighs, it balanced. Okay, you can go on. <laughs> you can go on. So Chad Bozeman picked the pivotal figure in Kemetic Egyptian uh, mythology, Jehudi. And in that moment, I'm thinking to myself, after I read the interview, this is a guy who was working at Pyramid Bookstore. This is the kid who was coming up at Howard studying black stuff. This is the guy who, as a high school student, wrote Crossroads. And then wrote, uh, uh, then this is the guy who ends up writing these other plays. And when he does hieroglyphic graffiti, it's produced with Kuntu, which is one of the most famous black theater groups. And then the last play that he did, it's very interesting. The last play that he did, is it Blue Asia? I think it's Blue Asia. Blue Asia is a play where the sister, who is the, the main character, loses her husband, loses her, not her husband yet, loses her fiance, her boyfriend, her boyfriend, to violence. A police officer kills this girl's boyfriend. The police officer is black. And so the, the play is about how she, she's got body image issues, she's dealing with misogyny. And what Bozeman said later in interviews, because people don't even know about this part of his life, this is what he thought he was going to do with his life. I'm a playwright. You know what I'm saying? I'm a director. He said, you know, I, what I was trying to convey, and the whole thing is written in kind of a hip-hop music style. He said, I was trying to convey the complexity of Black life in the language of hip-hop and take hip-hop and take it out of the misogynistic context to my main character's female but also deal with a critique of society and police brutality i mean imagine had he stayed on the earth to me this is the thing all the, the movie career and the acting career this is leading him back toward being able to have a platform to do the work that black theater is doing so when you see chadwick bozeman you're looking at philip hayes dean you're looking at woody king you're looking at Alice Childress. You're looking at August Wilson. You're looking at Amiri Baraka. You're looking, in other words, you're looking at the great black playwrights who influenced him. And he was in, it's so funny, one of the plays he directed as an undergraduate, Wine in the Wilderness, I laugh because I played the main role in Wine in the Wilderness. I was a theater major undergrad. My brother was a theater major at Tennessee State. In fact, my brother met Chadwick Bozeman and had a conversation with him when he produced Hieroglyphic Graffiti as a young cat at, you know, the big theater uh, conference, the Black Theater Festival they have in North Carolina was 
Chadwick Bozeman did hieroglyphic graffiti there, and that's where my brother Jeff met him, and they talking. So when we see Chad Bozeman, this isn't just a guy who's a great actor. He is an individual that represents all these communities of Black meaning makers, playwrights, storytellers. And so to lose someone like that at an age like this, that community is going to have a whole different conversation. But I think it's also, um, there's an opportunity as you're talking about him and you're, you're, you're sharing the begatting. And I love that, that we do <laughs> that, the begat Because there's an opportunity, you know, for, for 43 years old, it's sad, you know. Sure. It's sad. And, and people are struggling right now. You know, he was a vegetarian. He did everything right. What's the point? You know, you, could, you know, listen. It comes for all of us. And if anything, that discussion we had that played this morning about the circle of life, the cycle of life, and how that, you know, that your, your, your main purpose is to find why you're here and then do it every day. And that's what Chadwick Bozeman was saying. What's your purpose? He was saying that. What's your purpose? Not chasing money, not chasing fame. What is your purpose? And every day you get up with that in mind, right? Am I, am I living my purpose? So Chadwick not being here, he left breadcrumbs. He left yeah, a he, did. he left a, a <laughs> big, somebody's got to pick that up and run with yes, it. He did. Right? And yes, all he the did. folks that want to be in the arts, that's how you do it. It was his knowledge was layered. He didn't just become an actor. He came no. at it from the other side as a writer, as a director, thinking and processing. And that's why he could embody, but you you're right. Again, the ancestors were with him. And every oh, yes, role they were. that he played, and you see it, you saw it. You saw it. Yeah, Hmm, Karen, can you imagine, can you imagine being an undergraduate, being a student and being at a place and Howard is a magic place. You know, in fact, they say, you know, in fact, when he came, they had these t-shirts made up. Howard is our Wakanda. And me, you know me, I'm like, okay, number one, Wakanda is not real. <laughs> number two, I mean, cause you know, I'm always, you know, look, I'm Afro future. In fact, I'm, le I'm reading uh, M MK Jemison, that sister. She's got a, a, well, relatively new, this, this is her latest one. How long is black future month? Right, N.K. Jemison. But I mean, uh, in fact, I don't have it right here. Nanetti Okafor, uh, who you know does a lot of the, Af the Afro futures. I'm, I'm into all of that. No question. Of course, Black Panther. I mean, you know, that's what. But number one, Wakanda's not real. Number two, if any HBCUs are Wakanda, we're gonna have to step up our game <laughs> because let's be clear, I work here, so <laughs> let, let, let's be very clear. <laughs> I mean, so 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 let's not get so excited that we missed the point. But that haven't been said. They are magic places though. And as someone who came out of a theater department at HBCU, who knows the value of something that's called NATSA, the National Association of Dramatic and Speech Arts, um, you know, who went every year to the competitions at Dillard University and Kennedy King in Chicago, and we would load up our little van and drive and do our one act plays and do, I mean, so I know intimately what Chadwick Bose, what produced Chadwick Bozeman. It wasn't, in fact, when I interviewed for the job at Howard, one of the first faculty members I met and ancestors that they, they took me to lunch. I'm sitting in the faculty dining room and I looked up and I saw Henry Edmonds, H-E-N-R-I. And Professor Edmonds' father was one of the titans of black drama back in the 30s and 40s. He was a comrade and colleague of Thomas Edward Pogue. T.E. Pogue was the man at Tennessee State where I went to school. It was Tennessee A&I then traveled all over the world with these black theater companies. And these black college HBCU theater companies would travel all over the world. They would travel and do plays in Europe and all these different places. So Henry Edmonds came and spoke at the National Association for Dramatic and Speech Arts Conference in 1986. And I, I met her one time. She came to see our play. And we, we, were, in, we were in New Orleans, that was 1986. I interviewed for that job in the spring of 2000. I guess I was interviewing on campus while Chad Bozeman was next door in fine arts. And we, they went to, lunch, we went to lunch, I looked up, I said, damn, that's Henry Evans, this tall lady, very stately, that it tutu, that coolness. I said, Professor Evans. She looked at me, now mind you, 86, 96, it's been 14 years, and I wouldn't, you know, she looked at me and said, Tennessee State. <laughs> I said, you remember? I said, yes, I remember. And we started talking, I'm gonna tell you, what produced Chad Bozeman? were human beings who pour their entire lives into shaping other human beings. At her funeral, Henry Edmonds, I've got the program, we're at the chapel and I'm real sad, you know what I'm saying? I look 
and they had spelled her full name out. And for the first time, people who came to the funeral found out what those of us who knew her knew. Henry, H-E-N-R-I, was short for Henry with a Y. Henry, she was named Henry Highland Garnett Edmonds. Her father had named her for the great abolitionist partner of Martin Delaney and Frederick Del Henry Highland Garnett, this great theater tradition. So Chad Bozeman was produced. Al Freeman, who played Elijah Muhammad, was on the faculty at Howard. Felicia Rashad, as you say, who helped to teach him acting, was in a uh, Vera Katz, who he name checked at the commencement. All these are Howard faculty. And when Felicia Rashad decided, I'm going to help some of these young people, she matched some of them up with established folks with some money in Hollywood. And of course, that's where the story that people will read over the next few days and find out that Denzel Washington funded Chad Bozeman to go to Oxford to study drama, not knowing him from a can of paint, but because it's part of the community. When we see these individuals, they are working in community. And so even Angela Bassett, who got an honorary degree from Howard, he said, uh, she said that when Chad Bozeman was sitting with me and everybody, people know this story. I mean, you know, says that we're doing Black Panther. And he said to me, he said, you know, you may not remember this, but when you came to Howard to get your honorary degree, I was the student they paired you up with. So, I mean, it just sends chills. The answers are always, they are always in somewhere in this thing. And the creator, was the old song, uh, Pharaoh Sanders and them? Uh, the creator has a master plan. <laughs> in other words, and so Bozeman is emerging out of that. And I think that really speaks to, I think, why the loss stops us. And I thought that was something we could talk about for a minute this morning. I was thinking this morning, and for those of you watching, you know, Karen and I texting, Karen's like, I'm crying. I'm like, yeah, uh, you are crying. I can't even say I'm not crying. You crying because you done told on yourself already. <laughs> so I was like, so I'm sitting there, I mean, we're stunned, we're shocked, but you were able to get that emotion going. And so I said, well, yeah, maybe we won't do some, maybe we should do something. So then you said, you know what, let's do this. And that's what we're doing. So there are four, well, there are many, but I tend to think of four elements that bind communities in terms of culture. When we talk to my collective things, one are icons. Cameron Bozeman is an icon. He's a, but, but icons are often figures of, of uncritical praise. In other words, you can't say nothing bad about them. Like Martin Luther King smoked cigarettes. He would smoke cigarettes the end of the day he got killed. People, you can't talk about that King smoked cigarettes. Like, why not? Icon. Th this person represents us. So you can't say nothing about them. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, shrines. What is a shrine? A shrine is a, is a, is a, is a place. It, it's a specific place that we associate with representing us. So that's why people can say, you know, Howard University, the yard, Tennessee State, the yard, Spelman College, the yard, the gate at Winston-Salem State University. We all go through the gate. Why? Because this is the place. You know what I'm saying? This, this is the place. 125th Street. I don't care if it's vendors up there or not. Why? You go, the Apollo Theater. Uh, this, these, are, these are our shrines. You know, the stage, the rock, the tree. You got to touch it. Why? This is a shrine. Then the third of them, in some ways, are totems. What is a totem? A totem is like a portable shrine. So people would say, you know, you see somebody with a Tuskegee shirt on or somebody with a North Carolina a t shirt on or a Yankees baseball cap, at least before now. Because when we were coming up, if you had on something with NY on it, that meant you rep, you're either from New York or you like the Yankees. Now people just be having color schemes and stuff. I'm all confused. Because a totem, a flag lapel pin, right? You run for office, you got to have a flag pin. Why? Because this little totem, represents the place. It's a portable shrine. I mean, you know, I put my portable shrine on. So, and then finally, rituals. Rituals are what binds those other ones together. So Chad Bozeman, icon, standing at Howard, shrine, talking about these rituals of transfer. Two icons meet in the middle of the yard. One not an icon yet, the other one an icon, gonna transfer this iconship into you, Ali and Bozeman. I mean, all this thing happens, in, and what is the ritual? The ritual is graduation. The whole community convenes to say, okay, it's on y'all, y'all, y'all got next. And so with those things operating, what happens when an icon transitions? When an icon transitions, everyone pauses because the world has shifted and the world will never be the same. 
But as you say, we're born to die. We all got to go that way. As old folks used to say, we all going to one day be the star of the show. If you go to church when you're a child, they make you sit in the back because you laughing and joking, eating candy. Whatever. Then you get a little older, you move up into the congregation. Then you old people, y'all sit in the front. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then one day you're going to be in that box. You're going to be the star of the show. So we all going to move from back to front. But at the same time, when an icon transitions young, Otis Redding, I was just thinking about like, no, Otis Red Sam Cook. No, you can't wait. Who? Minnie Ripperton. Wait, we well, can't wait. No, Marvin Gaye. Often violence or plane crashes, but then when cancer Kobe, takes you, Kobe Bryant. Kobe. It was yeah, just no question. And in fact, that actually, uh, Karen, that's perfect because that allows us now to shrink the world of icons to a subcategory of entertainers. Now, you and I, all of us, have often been critical of overburdening entertainers with the idea that they should somehow be political figures and thinkers and all this kind of thing. I saw, I saw LeBron James call uh, Barack Obama, apparently, during this thing where they decide what they're going to play and that, and Obama uh, advised them, advised them, well, you know, maybe you should play and then, you know, figure out, of course you did, that figures. But they at least got the NBA to open up all the arenas to use to vote. It's okay, whatever. But, but which I'm sure too, that was advice too. But I think about somebody, what happens when you have an entertainer who is a student, who has said, I'm gonna spend my life grounded in my history and culture and use my platform to bring us. We've been talking about Beyonce these last few days and it made me think about, I thought I pulled a couple of books that, you know, we just decided we're gonna do this. Paul Robeson, right? The great Paul Robeson, here I stand. And this, I think this, he published this in 1958. Paul Robeson said, what is the role of the artist? The role of the artist is to use their craft to elevate their people, to elevate their culture. He said, I stood at the crossroads. He doesn't use the language of crossroads, but he said, I had to make a choice. And my choice was easy. I had no alternative. My father, I watched my father work. In fact, Chad Bolton said this about his father. It's very interesting. Talk about work ethic. You know, he said, he said I saw my father work two, three job shifts. I saw him do, he says, Whenever I get tired, or y'all ask me about why I work so hard, I said, I saw my father. I saw my father too. You saw your father. I mean, we, we had fathers to get up and go to work, you know what I'm saying, before the sun come up. So we can't not work. Bozeman had the same thing. And Robeson said, my father was like that. Here I stand. You see me, you see us. That's a heavy burden. So when Anina Simone is not here anymore, or in 2018, when an Aretha Franklin makes transition, you know, the whole thing shifts because when you have a celebrity in sports, I think sometimes sports celebrities who make transition, particularly tragically like Kobe, people who see them as icons kind of track our aging. In other words, we grow up with athletes. So athletes can never be old for us. What you talking about, man? Jordan ain't the best. You never saw Oscar Robs. In other words, people, but, but what they're really saying is, you see, I was 14. Now you 14. You don't know. And so now it's so fascinating to me to see uh, students now arguing about LeBron with those of us who saw Jordan. Because we're really arguing about our ages. <laughs> sports, <laughs> sports figures are age. So when Ali, it's so funny, I was pulling some things because, you know, every time somebody makes transition, I try to go get, you know, Ali, right? This is Life Magazine's issue. There's a lot of them, but Ali, a life in pictures, right? You're going to track him, but he's always going to be frozen here for people who can't face their own mortality. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, what was that line from, uh, from Mrs. Robinson, Simon and Garfunkel? Where, where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? A nation turns its lonely eyes to you. In other words, DiMaggio got old and died. No, he will always be <laughs> at this age, right? Babe Ruth. Oh, so that, that, that's sports. Musicians, music, I think when they make transition, mu music affects our moods. It, it attracts the moments of our life. So when you see someone make transition, tragically like Prince, so I'll pull the Prince joint, right? Here's Prince, right? Prince makes transition. I'll never forget when Prince made transition, we were in a department chairs meeting in the College of Arts and Sciences. And we sitting in the College of Arts and Sciences Dean's council room, we sitting there and I'm looking outside and then I'm hearing music and I'm hearing all this press music. And I'm saying, what's going on out there? I'm looking out because we can see the windows and the kids and I'm hearing music. I'm saying, they just playing Prince. Then I heard another Prince song. Then I heard like more. I was like, what the hell? 
So I, let me go on my computer because I'm trying to pay attention in this meeting. But now y'all talking about, I don't tell y'all. Let me put, oh shit. So it's like Prince Pat. Prince? Prince is what? And the whole move, why? Because at that moment, when you play anybody's song, it takes you to that moment that you associate with the song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you're in the store, you're in somebody's car, they put the wrong song on, and it turns, no. We just say, don't play that song for me. Because <laughs> it brings back memories. You know what I'm saying? In other words, Prince, but when Prince passing, which was premature, it froze all of us because we associate Prince, these songs, with the development of our lives as well. But when a film star makes transition, I think that's a little different. A film star kind of speaks to our archetypes. In other words, this is a person who either played a role that is unforgettable or, um, yeah, it's a person who played a role that's unforgettable. So we think of Denzel, we think of all the roles he played. But what happens when a film star occupies other icons? This is what makes Chad Bozeman different. Mm -hmm. Chad Bozeman played Jackie Robinson. And so, you know, Jackie Robinson is on the approved list. He is an icon. I mean, I, I pulled a few, you know, I got all the children's books. This is uh, you know, those great Black Americans achievement. This is the one Caress Scott King endorsed. She wrote the preface stuff. You know, Jackie Robinson, you know, Rachel Robinson's still alive, God bless her, in her late 90s. Jack Robinson is an icon. He's a figure of uncritical praise. When Chad Bozeman does 42, we don't know Chad Bozeman. We don't know the actor. We don't know the director, the, the, the playwright, the accomplished young playwright, the student on the way to being a master scholar who's in the tradition of August Wilson. We just know that boy played this. Shout out Jackie Robinson. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then you see them, you see, you see them in there, you see the love scenes, you see the, the frustration. Then Jay-Z lays the track down over it. You know, I'm a Brooklyn boy. It's gonna take some getting used to. They just made, they just brought this icon from the 40s to a new generation. And now all these young people wanna know about Jackie Robinson. Chad with Bozeman, if you never made another film, brother, you did us a service. Then he comes right back with James Brown. <laughs> no, you can't. I'm like, you know, bro, you can't bring out that. Mr. Bird, Mr. Bird, <laughs> like, he's embodying James Brown. He doesn't have to get it perfect, but now I'm thinking Hollywood gonna make him play everybody. In other words, <laughs> you know, in other words, this is the guy who you've decided this is our Negro now, so he's gonna play everybody. So he does uh, 42 in 2013. He does Get On Up in 2014. He does, by the way, I remember, did you um, did you go see uh, view, uh, James Brown's body when he was lying in state at the Apollo? I did not. It was crazy. I, I, I drove up, in fact, I'm trying to remember, when Michael Jackson made transition, I was in Manhattan. I don't come up from Philly to, to, to hunt in the bookstores. And I heard it on the TV. I was, I, was go, I was over near 116th Street, near the Cathedral of St. John's Divine, going over to Labyrinth Books on 112 Old by Columbia. And I'm walking past, and it was summertime, because they had open, the, the, the cafes were open, and the, and the televisions were, and I was like, Michael Jackson? Damn. Did what I was going to do, and went straight to 125th Street. And as you know, it was nothing but Michael. <laughs> An icon has made transition. We go into the shrine, 125th Street, and we're going to turn this whole place into a shrine. When James Brown made transition, I came up again to go view the body. And Karen, you already know, you, you know, because you were there. That line, I mean, you were in the city, yeah. in, the, in the region. That line went from the Apollo Theater all the way over to Malcolm X and then down for block after block. And it was like eight across and just deep. I stood in that line for at least like maybe eight hours. Seriously, I mean, because I, I come up early figuring wow. it's going to take some time. And I'm like, but, but just standing in the line was the thing. Because the community, the music is playing, people sharing stories. You know, so there's that. But when he plays James Brown, it's like, yeah, this is like Jamie Foxx and Ray Charles. This is going to be like, you're going to do a James Brown imitation. But as you said, Chad Bozeman's gift, he's a, he's a trained theater actor. So anytime they tell you the theater, your job is not to be that person. Your job is to embody that spirit and convey that. So he brings it off. And then he does Gods of Egypt. And I was like, that's an L. That's 2015. But Black Panther... When he did Black Panther, 
Now you're talking to several generations. You're talking to my generation. That's why I got the John Byrne on. This is my joint right here. Look, this, <laughs> this, 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 this is a cover from Black Panther. When John Byrne was drawing Black Panther, this, this cover is from, uh, Black Panther didn't have his own comic book first. He was with the, he was with the fantastic, in fact, the best book on Black Panther is by a brother who teaches at Seton Hall, my dear friend, Todd Stephen Burroughs. In fact, I wrote, oh, the, I wrote the afterward. Yes. It's called Marvel's, we, we talked about this one before, right. I think, Marvel's Black Panther. I love this book. It's, uh, it's actually published by Black Press, uh, my man Kwasi Kanadu, uh, Diasporic Africa Press. And so we talk about this in this book. Really, Todd talks about it, and I, and I talked a little bit at the end. Uh, Black Panther didn't have his own comic book. Black Panther was in the Fantastic Four comic book. He, he appeared in the Avengers. I first saw him when I was a kid, when he was in the Avengers Defenders War. And I'm, you know, I'm like, I guess I was 11, 12 years old. And this particular drawing here, this is from the cover of when they gave Black Panther a kind of semi book. It was called Jungle Action, featuring the Black Panther. Now, of course, we were too young to realize that's an insult. <laughs> you know, and they and they were drawing it not as an insult to call it jungle action because topographically there are no jungles in Africa. It's a form of a vegetation. There's rainforests and stuff, no, but jungle action, Black Panther, right? So he's got when you when Black Panther movie come out, all of us who comic book people, we like, mm, let me then yeah, nah, because you was we talked about Wesley Snipes was gonna do Black Panther. I mean Wesley Snipes. If he hadn't, if they hadn't pushed him off that crossroad, we'd be talking about Wesley Snipes in the, in the way we talk about Bozeman in some ways, I think. But, okay, so you get us. We go in. Okay, this ain't bad. Ryan Coogler, oh, okay, all right. So y'all go, okay. The Killmongers, we talked about all the things we talked about, we know, we, you get us. But then you get another generation. A generation now in the wake of the killing of Trayvon Martin and Sandra Bland. And they, we looking for heroes. And we're looking for an outlet for our anger. So we identify with Michael B. Jordan, Killmonger. We with Killmonger. Is it? But we also identify with Shawla. And we, and so we also need to think about Africa differently. Wakanda's not real. That's not real Africa. However, the idea of Africa is more important. The idea, you're not going to clown Africa no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So SZA, you know, and Kendrick, and you know, I mean, you're not going to clown Africa no more. You're going to get some African people here. Uh, the sister Ruth Carter, the designer, I'm going to, these costumes going to come from the people of Africa. I'm going to, and then standing in the center of that thing, having been introduced in the earlier Marvel pictures, Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman, this young brother, cool. He ain't all muscle bound to me. No, this is a dude, when you see him, you say, that's a regular dude. Yeah, he's a regular dude. And so, but he's larger than life because of his spirit, his attitude, his coolness, and he's surrounded with women. Like you say, you got Denai Guerrero, you got uh, uh, Lupita Nyong'oro, you got, you, I mean, um, his, the sister who plays his, his sister, Shuri. Oh, sure. And so, you know, and so when you see him, here they go, I mean, you know, entertainment, they had the comic con, this is black people. I mean, comic book world got some black people. We usually get relegated to nerd status. Now all the cool people want to be in the comics, right? Uh, there he is by himself. You got solo black man on the cover of the, the trade magazines. Are you serious? And then, of course, Time Magazine, Newsweek. Here's, here's World of Stone, the Black Panther Revolution. It's like, Let's wait a pause minute. There. Let's pause there. He has cancer in this picture. That is insane. That okay. is insane. Karen, what's going through his mind? I don't know. And that's the thing that I'm now looking back, and it's Letitia Wright and, of course, Angela Bassett. Uh, but yeah. Thank you, Letitia about. Wright, Angela Bassett, yes. yes. Um, and Lupita Nyong'o. He has cancer in that picture. Which, that broke the internet, because I remember when that came out, because we were like, Chadwick Boseman's a bad boy. Um, yeah. No, but How do you get up every day? How do you get up every day and do what he did? 2016, he was diagnosed. And it moved to stage four in the last year. And he's doing interviews. He's doing commencement speeches. He's filming movies. Filming, filming movies. movies. I'm, some of us have trouble getting out of bed some mornings, you know, especially during COVID-19, we struggle. Some of us have trouble getting out of bed without dealing with that. 
So I just, I think, you know, I just want to put a fine point on this. And the reason why I wanted to have this conversation, because we all struggle with our mortality, which is why I think a lot of us act out and, and say, oh, we're going to die anyway. And you do a whole bunch of crazy stuff. But if you <laughs> reframe, you reframe your mind to, to just do what you say, which is that we are honoring, we are begetting, we are the beget, the beget of the people that came before us. And if we could live our lives the way a Chadwick Bozeman did, which is to every day get up with purpose. What he told those Howard students to get up with, find your purpose and make sure every day you're committed to that. And that community, those four pillars that you broke down, like let's embody, you know, the shrines and, and the totems and, and, the, and the spaces that, that we, you know, we're not here alone is the point. No. And so like, if, if we just lean into that, maybe, maybe it'd be a little easier. Um, Chadwick is gone, it's hard. You know, it's hard to lose anyone. We've all lost people. And we're going to not be here. We're not but in be being here. here, how are you living? How are you living? And if you get up every day, take a picture like that Rolling Stone picture, do a movie like Black Panther at the height of your city, mm. and still every day get up and be a blessing, come on. Chadwick Bozeman, man, is a symbol. You know, I don't want to deify him, but as a symbol of No, no, no. Just want That's to right. say that. No, no, no. I think that is a good way to put a point, a fine point in, 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 in for now, Karen. We, we, we send all the love to his family, all the love to his community. He has a big family. Um, and what you just said is the lesson, one of the lessons we can take from this brother's time on earth. All of us, all of us represent what made us and what we came from, what we came from. And when a brother or a sister like this leaves the physical world, they've left us with a roadmap, with a blueprint. And so, yeah, it's a sad moment. You're right. And we all grapple with our mortality. We all can always take comfort in the fact that while we are here, we can do what we can. And I think that's, I don't, not knowing him, not having a chance to really sit and feel his spirit one-on-one, -on -one, but being part of a community that he was part of and seeing that and feeling that, it's very clear that, the Congo have a, a saying, uh, Baba um, Fuki, I used to say this. He says, hold that up that holds you up. So when you build your community, you're facing cancer. Yes, but I'm not facing it alone. This body is facing it alone. But I have a wife. I have parents and siblings. I have a community. And I've got children that literally would not take off Black Panther costumes to go to sleep, to eat, to, you know what I'm saying? Who will live to a ripe old age and introduce it. So I have done what I, so yes, maybe I can't stop from moving into the spiritual world now, but while I was here, I did the best I could. In fact, maybe that's the last thing I, I, I say. I'll never forget when John Henry Clark uh, was getting ready to make transition, he used to repeat something he said he heard John uh, Thurgood Marshall say, because Dr. Clark had lost his sight. And he said, I was sitting in my basement in my brownstone, place full of books, and I couldn't read with my eyes anymore. We, we raised money, got him a reading machine, this kind of thing. But he said, one day the TV was on, and I heard Thurgood Marshall at retirement, and they said, you know, why are you retiring? You know, Thurgood Marshall by then, he just, he didn't care. He was like, the old man, he said, I'm old, I'm worn out. <laughs> you know, he couldn't even close the, uh, the collar on his shirt to get the tie, the gal, I mean, you know. And then he said, well, what do, you, what do you want people to remember? What do you want them to say about you? Larry Marge said, tell them I did the best I could with what I had. And John Henry Clark said, at that moment, I stopped feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> he said, I have produced more books. He started dictating books. Chad Bozeman did the best he could with what he had. And it was more than enough. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. So may we all live our lives like that brother lived, lived, lived his life. I say. Uh, I love you. I love you too. Thank you for this, Karen. Not well, just for me, but for everybody who's going to watch it. Because people are looking for places to have this ritual of mourning. Thank you. This is an hour and change, but this is 20, 30 years in the making. This relationship, yes. this, this yes. ability to do this. And, you yes. know, I'm grateful for a time such as this. I think we were both created and built. And I, I feel like we're doing Great doing the most with our time here on this earth. So I just want to thank you for being, for this partnership because uh, I would never want to do this alone, but you are the absolute best person to do this with. So thank you, oh. great car. You said it before I could say it. <laughs>
<laughs> thank you, Karen Hunter, for all of us. Thank you. So next week, we're going to go live. Uh, yes. so, so guys, get your questions ready. We're going to do Q&A, more Q&A than us just talking. Um, and I'll try to figure out the technology and get it together to get all you, as many questions in as possible. But I'm grateful that this family is growing and um, you know, working on a, I, I got an idea yesterday about gardening you know, and weeding and taking out the weeds and so that more stuff mm -hmm. So I'm working on something. Uh, but it was inspired by doing this. So you know, thank you again. Uh, I absolutely love everyone that's listening. Subscribe, uh, but share this more. More than subscribing, share this uh, because I think Please. it's important that we magnify the message. Right. Please, y'all next week. Bye. Doctor. See you. Love you. Bye. See you.